Alright guys, what's going on? It's Shram here and welcome back to another video I got for you guys today. Today I am going to be attempting to rebuild the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they have a very solid defense so far this year, you know, with an exception to a few games. <laughs> but, you know, their their top three players are pretty good there. Marshall Yonda, Eric Weddle. Those guys are getting up there in age. But Michael Pierce, I think, is pretty young. Pretty sure he was a rookie like last year or the year before or something. And he's an 89. I don't know... I didn't know they gave him that high of an overall, but anyway, I'm going to get right into this one. Here's the Ravens team for this season. Offense isn't the greatest, obviously, uh, led by Joe Flacco. Very average quarterback with extremely high throw power. There's that. There's He, he has shades of elite in him, but um, I feel like most of the time he's just very average. But he's definitely been a solid quarterback for them. I can't say anything like that bad. He's not necessarily bad. I mean, well, who is it this year? They played against some team this year. I think it might have been the Jaguars, and he got pulled because he was playing horribly. But other than that, he's been pretty average for them. Uh, the running back situation, I don't even know what's going on with this in the actual NFL. I know Danny Woodhead's hurt. Terrence West, I feel like, is definitely not the starter. I think it's uh, um, Javorius Allen. I think he's the starter, but I could totally be wrong. I'm definitely going to be looking to get a different running back, I think. Wide receiver core is a huge issue. I mean, they're not playing horribly right now. I think Mike Wallace had pretty good games the last two last two games, but obviously he, he was in his prime when he was on the, on the Steelers, I think. But anyway, uh, yeah, this this wide receiver core isn't the greatest. I think Brashad Perriman will probably get some some start in action, at least for the first season or something. The offensive line's very decent. Um, Marshall Yonda is probably going to stay. I know he's really old. He's actually he's only 32. Honestly, I thought he was older than that. But 32 is 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 still old, but decent for an offensive lineman. So I'm gonna keep him there. He's also a 95, and he's definitely like the best right guard in the NFL right now. <laughs> is he actually a right guard? Right? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, Ronnie Stanley isn't bad at all. Oh, he doesn't have a development anymore. I think last year he had quick or something. But he's very young and 81 overall. He's, he's nice to have there. Uh, tight end, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. How is Crockett Gilmore? 25. Okay, he's not bad because Benjamin Watson's gone. But Crockett Gilmore will definitely be the tight end for the first season. I could just sign Ladarius uh, Green again. I almost said Ladarius Webb. But I could sign Ladarius Green again, but I don't want to because I don't want to do that you know too many times in a row. On the defense, though, one of the better players on the defense definitely is Eric Weddle, but he is sort of old. He's 32. I might keep him for the first season to see how he does, because I don't think he retires, like, uh, as soon as, as I'm thinking. So maybe I can at least keep him for the first season. I don't know. Uh, cornerback core isn't that bad. How old's Jimmy Smith? 29? Ooh. I think I'll keep him for the first year, though, because he actually is very good. So I think I'm going to keep him for the first year. I think Brennan Carr is having a very good season in, you know, in the actual NFL, but I think he's going to get traded here. Coming from the coming from the Cowboys, so no remorse for that one. No, but uh, Michael Pierce is an 89. I, I don't even know if he's playing super well or not. Brendan Williams is it? I thought he was a defensive tackle. I guess he's now left end. I don't know how this works. Um, but he's an 83 with quick. 28 years old. I think it all depends on how much he's making. If I keep him or not. I know he's like a very good player for this team. But I could always just uh, slide Zadarius Smith down here because there's some rookies I want to start. Like Tyus Bowser is down there and Tim Williams over here. Uh, Terrell Suggs, obviously one of the better players to play in this defense for the last 14 years. He was a beast, but I think I might just keep him just because, just just out of respect, really, for the man. He was a beast. Uh, CJ Mosley, definitely one of the better players in this defense, for sure. He's a young player. He's only 25 years old, and he's just phenomenal. He's a fantastic player. Uh, Tony Jefferson, they just got in free agency. They also have Marlon Humphrey. I forgot about this. So their cornerback core, I think, is actually already set for the first season. I don't even have to trade for any, because Tavon Young is good, too. And Marlon Humphrey, do you have a development? Not just normal, but you are a rookie and you're 21 years old. What about Tavon? He is normal as well. I think I'll probably slide Tavon to the nickel and then Marlon Humphrey to the number two, but anyway, I'm going to get into some trades. This pretty much happens every rebuild, so you guys should be used to it by now, but Joe Flacco, Danny Woodhead, and Campanaro. I think her name's Michael. I want to say Michael, but I'm, I, I'll feel bad if I'm wrong. <laughs> Whatever, I already said it. Who cares? For the Jets' first and fifth rounders. Terrence West, Jeremy Macklin, and a seventh rounder. For Joel Batonio and a sixth rounder. I should probably stop trading within the divisions of these teams, but whatever. <laughs> I'm going to apologize to Ninja Cheese for this one because I know he's a Browns fan and he's most likely watching right now. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to apologize directly to you. But I'm trading to the Browns again, you know, another Browns a Browns trade. This Lewis guy, I think her name is like Patrick Onwauser or, or something. I don't know. And Ryan Mallett for their first round draft pick. Yeah, this trade would, would definitely happen in, in real life. Benjamin Watson, Ladarius Webb, and a third rounder for Jarvis Landry. I feel like I'm giving away a lot for him. But Austin Howard, a first and a second for Stephon Diggs. I don't really mind getting rid of those draft picks, though, because I, could, I think I'm going to be able to get at least a couple more first rounders. I aim to get at least like two more, maybe. 
and then I can probably use those into draft in the draft to trade down into the second round. So I'm not really that worried, but yeah, we got Stefan Diggs. Add one more first rounder to the collection. Uh, Mike Wallace and Brandon Carr for the 49ers first rounder. Javorius Allen and Ryan Jensen for Brandon Scherf. I'm trading Freeney, uh, Hurst, and Levine Sr. for the Patriots second rounder. Luke Boenko and Brent Urban for the Cardinals first rounder. And I think this might be the last trade, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So I recently figured out that the Ravens are in a 3-4 and not a 4-3. I had initially had uh, Brennan Williams at defensive tackle because he was an 89 overall and I was going to play him and Michael Pierce at the two defensive tackle spots because the game for some reason had the, the Ravens in like a 4-3 as their, the, the, the scheme that you can see you know, when he switched to the defense. But I checked the formation subs and they are indeed a 3-4 so I'm acquiring another middle linebacker so I'm just going to build the best freaking defense that I can right now so I'm trading Brennan Williams, Matthew, I think your name is Matthew. Matthew Judon, and the second rounder I just got from the Patriots a little while ago for uh, Bobby Wagner. This is a team for the first season. I signed Colin Kaepernick off of free agency, and he's just going to be on the team for this season. If he wins, like, MVP or something, then I'll give him another contract. But if he doesn't, he's, you know, not getting re-signed. But Kenneth Dixon is the running back who has quick development for some reason. I didn't know he had quick development, uh, but he's the running back. I said I was going to try to trade for one, but I think I'm just going to try to uh, draft one because that's kind of fun sometimes. Wide receivers are pretty much set. I might try to draft a slot guy, unless Brashad Perriman just goes off or something. Offensive line, I think, is good for this entire rebuild, unless Marshall Yonda retires, which I really hope doesn't happen. Tight end, I might decide to draft one. I'm not sure yet. But this is the defense. This defense is actually phenomenal with the way it stands right now. Actually, though, I think I have to change Eric Weddle back to something, because he was a 90 as whatever he was before. Oh, geez, I don't remember what it was. Let's try zone. I feel like zone usually makes safeties go up. If he goes up to a 90, I'll keep him in this game. Let's see. And you went 90, my man. You're an 89. You went up by one. I swear you were just a 90. Am I just losing it? Was he not a 90? Is it playmaker? Please be a 90. You looked a lot better when you were a 90, my man. Uh, he's a 90 again. All right. So I guess it's playmaker. But uh, this is what the team looks like. Easily the best linebacker duo in the NFL for sure. But yeah, the the, the Ravens have a 3-4 defense. I did not know that. So yeah, <laughs> um, this is the defense now. I didn't really want to get rid of Brendan Williams. I kind of like the look of having Michael Pierce and Brandon Williams here, but I think I constructed more of a more of a 4-3 kind of team with respect to those defensive tackles, but I kind of wanted to stick with the Ravens' like actual scheme for this first season, and also it makes more sense with Trail Suggs being here. He's more of a 3-4 kind of guy. And uh, Tyus Bowser, is, I, I feel like he can play both because he's pretty quick, so I feel like, I don't know, what's his, what's his own coverage? It's actually really bad. So I guess he's more of a 3-4 sort of guy because he doesn't, doesn't even have that good of block shedding. I don't know, but... We're in a 3-4. I'm just going to make sure, actually. Screw what I just said about trying to keep the Ravens' uh, playbook or whatever. Just in case this isn't a 3-4 for any weird reason, I'm going to go into a 3-4. Because I'm strange, and I just want to make sure that it's a 3-4 so I don't waste a season with uh, CJ Mosley. And, you know, ruin a season with my defensive line here starting. Actually, this guy wouldn't have been that bad, but it doesn't matter. Whatever, I'm done talking about that. But anyway, yes, this is the defense. Uh, the cornerback core looks very good. Like I said earlier, though, I have Tavon Young as, as the nickel corner and Marlon Humphrey is coming in to be the number two. I think that just makes more sense. And yeah, this is the team. So I'm going to adjust the sliders and I'll see you at the midseason. Seems like Kaepernick is not the answer considering uh, the Ravens right now. We are one and seven. Playing terribly. But anyway, we have to bring back Jarvis Landry. I also know that we lost to the Browns, which is rough. But we have to bring back Jarvis Landry. Uh, Crockett Gilmore, I'll probably give a contract to. And I think that's it. So Jarvis Landry is the first guy here. He has 96 catching. Jeez. Right, let's go with this. I keep forgetting to do this. Okay, so some guy told me just to just to offer the 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 normal contract that's here. So let me try this with Crockett Gilmore. All right, he took that one because I guess that is less money over time or something. I don't know. But anyway, some guy told me to do that. I forgot who that was. I'm sorry for forgetting who you were, but I need to start doing that because apparently that is the way to go. But look at the confidence. The entire O line is not confident. It's probably a mixture between the fact that you know the reason why we're one and seven is probably a mixture between Colin Kaepernick playing terribly and Kenneth Dixon playing terribly. If I had to take a guess, that's probably it because running backs under an 80 are horrible. In sim, in sim that is. But anyway, on defense, look at all the all the confidence. Okay, nobody's confident. At least Zadarius Smith has elite amount of, uh, of experience. But the linebackers look like they're playing decent <laughs> because I think they're the only people on the team that like really aren't, conf or aren't not confident. Double negative there. But here's the standings. This division's actually horrible. 
So if we can somehow clutch out and go 8-0, we might have a chance of making the playoffs. But I highly doubt it, considering we just lost 31-10 to the to the Dolphins. Okay, well, I'm going to scout these players, and I'll see you guys at the end of this season. And I just noticed we don't even have my first-round pick. Ah, uh, that sucks. Wow, what a shocker. We didn't make the playoffs. How did we do? 3-13. and This division was actually really bad, though. So we definitely have a chance if it continues going this way. But team schedule, we tied once in the preseason, won a game, and lost two. Regular season, though, went on a three-game losing streak. We did lose to the Browns there. We beat the Steelers somehow. Arguably the best team in this division we ended up beating. Okay, went on a nice losing streak there. Beat the Packers, another very good team. And we beat the Browns. All right, at least we got revenge. At least we beat the Browns. Uh, but anyway, let's check out the stats. Tom Brady was MVP, so that means Colin Kaepernick is not getting re-signed, and rightfully so. He played very badly. Running, Kenneth Dixon played very badly. <laughs> Stephon Diggs, though, over 1,100 yards and four touchdowns. One of the brighter spots in this team. Even Jarvis Landry didn't do terribly. And Brashad Perriman, actually, over 900 yards with eight touchdowns. Uh, sacks, probably not awful. Never mind. Ronnie Stanley led up 29 sacks. Good to know. Bobby Wagner, though, 145 tackles. CJ Mosley only had 99, but that's okay. Sacks, like, yeah, almost absolutely none. That's not good at all. Interceptions, though, we got three from Marlon Humphrey. That's actually really good. Three from Jimmy Smith, two from CJ Mosley and Bobby Wagner, and then we got one from Terrell Suggs, the GOAT, <laughs> Davon Young, and Eric Weddle. Let's check out tackles for loss, though. I always forget about this. We got 12 from Michael Pierce and 11 from Terrell Suggs. All right, so Terrell Suggs actually played very well instead of Michael Pierce. Any touchdowns, though? Maybe Marlon Humphrey got one? Nope. Okay, no touchdowns. Probably last on offense. Actually, we were 31st. Must have had at least a decent defense, though. Never mind, 21st. Okay, anyway. Obviously... There is not going to be a Raven in this, but I think, did Trevor Simeon come in? Trevor Simeon came in fourth. Okay. What am I? The Ravens? Okay, so AFC, obviously nobody in here from the Ravens. Anyway, Defensive Player of the Year. Don't really expect to see any Ravens players in here. Offensive Rookie of the Year, it goes to Deshaun Watson. Do we even have any? I'm not even sure. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Dias Bowser comes in third. Marlon Humphrey comes in seventh. Uh, I was hoping Marlon Humphrey would, would get more experience than that, but that is, a, I mean, not more experience. Get up higher in the list than that, but that's okay. Let's check out the team, though. Obviously, nobody's confident, really. But Jarvis Landry is not confident for some reason. I mean, he didn't, I guess he had a pretty bad, pretty, pretty down year. Look at our fullback, though. 17.8K. What a beast. Uh, Stefan Diggs has 10K. That's not bad, I guess. Defense, though. Anybody have a lot? Marlon Humphrey. 10K. That's not bad, but this is abysmal looking. So, I'm, I mean, Bobby Wagner has a good amount, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to advance to the Super Bowl, and I'll spend that experience later. We are in free agency now. We have 6.28 mil. Maybe that means we have some good draft picks. I don't know, but there's really no money here at all. So, anybody to sign? I mean, Spencer Ware isn't bad, but I'm definitely not going to sign him. Uh, Terrence West is a free agent. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody here that I really want. Um, I'm probably going to draft a running back and hope that works out, but... Yeah, I don't see anybody, unless there's any random players down here. Like, I mean, Dominic Easley is always here, but I never really need him. So, I'm not going to take him here, because I can probably trade for, for better people. So, yeah, I'm not going to take anybody. And then now I'll just uh, see you guys in the draft. We are in the draft now, and I know I have the first overall pick. So, I think what's going to happen here is that I'm going to trade down. At least, I'm going to trade down with the Vikings, most likely, and then probably with the Bears. And then I'll probably end up settling around like the, the Bills or the Colts, but then I'll take my fourth pick, I'll take this pick, and then I have the 11th and the 17th, which I will probably take as well. So let me trade this one down a couple times, and I'll come back with whoever I'm taking. I should note that I'm trading this uh, pick down with the Vikings. I think I'm acquiring back our pick, <laughs> and then I'm acquiring the Vikings' first-round draft pick, I'm pretty sure. And then their second-round draft pick this year. With this pick, I'm going with my quarterback. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Josh Kelly... There are some decent draft stories about him. I'm not sure if this guy is superstar, though. I understand he's a late first-rounder, and we're still in the early first round. I don't care. I'm taking him, though. 78 was superstar. We reached, apparently, but he is superstar, so I'm happy with that. This pick is going to Banks Phillips. I know this guy has superstar, and he's blazing fast. So let's go with him. 80 overall was superstar. We took him exactly when he was supposed to go. Rather low catching, but I'm okay with every other stat. This pick is going to Gregory Taylor, the man with two first names. He's classified as a speed back, but he's not that quick. He's very agile though, so let's go with him. 75 was slow, of course. I always draft one bust, don't I? I'm just taking this wide receiver here. I mean, I don't really need him, but just look at this guy. This guy looks amazing. I just have to take him to see what he's all about. How do you have, okay. He wasn't going to start anyway, but look at those stats. He is six foot three with 97 speed. Oh my. 
Slow development really sucks, but I didn't really plan on starting him anyway, so I'm not really all that worried, I guess. Screw it. I'm just going to take another running back with this pick. Are you good? 81 overall with normal. You are super, super slow, though. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to start you. <laughs> this pick is going to Harvey Poyer. This guy looks phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. 78 with quick. He's very good. He's definitely going to come in and fill in for uh, the, the retired Terrell Suggs, so I'm okay with this. This pick is going to Duncan Mol Molinaro? Molinaro? I don't know, but he's a mid-third round talent. Looks very good, though. He's very quick, so let's take him here. 78 with Superstar. What a draft pick there. He's definitely going to come in and start at tight end for us. This pick is going to Lorenzo Curry. He looks pretty solid. Maybe if this dude's just like a random superstar late in the draft, he might come in and start. Let's see, though. 69 with normal. He's only a 69 because of the scheme. He's actually decent, though. But he's definitely not going to start, so I'm probably going to trade for a running back. This pick is going to Alan Dixon. He actually looks like a pretty solid cornerback. I don't really need a cornerback, but, you know, I don't know. Let's see what he's about. 72 with normal. Not bad, but not really that great. He actually has really good stats, though. This next player I'm drafting, I actually was not able to scout all the way, but... I didn't scout him at all, actually, but he is a 6.7 combine, which is ridiculously high for, for offensive linemen, so I'm just going to go with him. 80 overall. Okay, yeah, he's he's really talented. I'm doing something I have not yet done this year, so I'm trading uh, Kenneth Dixon in a fifth rounder for Quan Alexander, who is going to be our new free safety, I think. So I definitely just fixed our running back situation, so Eric Weddle... Sorry I traded him, but he was getting old and regressing at a ridiculous rate. He went down four overall points from last year, so yeah, he's off the team. I really, I really like Eric Weddle, though. But Eric Weddle, a third and a fourth rounder for Devontae Freeman. Uh, Nico Siragusa, I think his name is, and this running back we just drafted, and a second rounder next year for Mike Daniels. I'm just trading Crockett Gilmore for the Bills' fifth, sixth, and seventh rounders, just to make sure that our rookie tight end starts. This is a team for the second season. I have a couple other players I can still upgrade, but I'll get to that once I introduce the team here. So, you know, we drafted this quarterback. He looks very good. He has superstar development, so hopefully he can win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Devontae Freeman came over from the Falcons. He's a 97 overall. Offense looks a lot better now, and here's the defense. It also looks a lot better. Quan Alexander is our new free safety. Uh, what else did we get new? Mike Daniels is our new right end. Hopefully he can get a lot of sacks. Other than that, though, I think the defense is pretty much the same, actually, except for this dude. I forgot we drafted him, and he's very talented as well. So I'm going to spend the rest of this experience, then I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. At the midseason mark here, we have to bring back Stefan Diggs at least, but I have not seen the record yet, so let's see how we're doing. 5-3, and three, not bad. We just lost pretty badly, I guess, to the Falcons. We were 2-0 at week 3, so I was hoping we'd be like 8-0 by now, but that's okay. Anyway, though, Stefan Diggs has to come back to the team for sure. Who else is here? Uh, Michael Pierce definitely has to come back to the team. Quan Alexander as well, along with CJ Mosley and Brandon Scherf. Uh, Nick Boyle, I'm going to let go. He's actually my fullback. <laughs> I moved him to fullback just because he was actually pretty decent there. But Stefan Diggs, please come back to the team. Let me do what that guy told me to do again. Just give him this contract. Okay, so I'm going to have to go back and re-sign him again. That's why I usually just do it this way, because if I do it like this, they usually come back. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to keep doing it this way. Just save some time. Thanks for, the, thanks for the tip, though, man, but I'm just going to keep doing it this way. I mean, I know I waste a little bit of money, but it also saves a little bit of time because, well, especially in this one, because I could not connect to the EA servers for some reason, so I couldn't do this on a cloud franchise. And if you guys don't know, simulating through the weeks is so much slower if you are on, like, a normal offline franchise than, you, than if you were on a cloud franchise. It takes so much longer. So, yeah, I'm just kind of irritated with all that. But anyway, check out the team, though. Our quarterback has 10K experience. I'm definitely going to spend that now. Try to give us the best chance of making the playoffs here. Let's just get his awareness up to 80 if I can. I can. Anything else that I can get up quickly? I'll just play action up to 80 as well. I can. I'm going to... Nope. Uh, can I get one more? I can. All right. 80 overall. Josh Kelly. Not bad. So he is definitely going to be the quarterback of the future for this team. Actually, I can't say definitely yet because I'm not entirely sure if he's going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. But look at this. Christian Hackenberg. Hold on a second. This dude has 16K. What did he do? He had to have gotten, like, Team of the Week a couple weeks. Like, what happened? Did he just get a lot of experience? Like, no Team of the Week? How did he get 16K? All right, I'm upgrading him for sure. He's going to go up to, like, an 85. Uh, maybe not that high. Let's get catching up to an 80, actually, though. That's actually kind of important. Uh, release, I'll get up. 84. Okay, I was actually pretty close. He's an 84 overall. Wow, that dude's really good. Hopefully, he can go up to, like, an 88 by the end of the season or something. Um, but, yeah, there's the offense looking pretty good. Here's the defense then. Anybody on this team or on this side of the ball have a lot. Doesn't really, doesn't really look like it, but let me spend my coach experience before I forget. So let's do this on 
make sure I do it on the right thing. So I am on the player progression. So let's go with, I'm saying linebacker. I have pretty young linebackers. At least I have the rookie and then I have Tyus Bowser still up there, I think. Right, I have Tyus Bowser still, still starting. Yeah, he's right there. Okay, cool. But anyway, I'm going to scout these players and then I'll see you guys at the end of this season where hopefully we can make the playoffs. I think we have a decent shot. At the end of this season here, we made the playoffs. We went nine and seven, take on the nine and seven Chargers. Why does it say nine and six over there? Yeah, it totally went nine and seven. Do you see that? <laughs> like the Steelers went nine and six. We went nine and six. Bengals went five and ten. Browns went three and twelve. Did it? What? Did the last season or the, the last game just not register or something? Hold on. Well, anyway, went on a four-game win streak in the beginning at the beginning of the season. Not bad there. Lost a couple games in there, then won a couple again. But the last game we totally lost. Um, I don't know why. Okay, there we go. Now it switched. That was strange. Steelers went 10 and 6, we went 9 and 7. I don't know what happened there. That was a strange little glitch. But anyway, our quarterback played decently. I mean, I mean the interceptions are a lot, but the touchdowns and, and yards are very good. Hopefully that he can get the interceptions down next season though. Uh Devontae Freeman, 28 touchdowns! Holy crap! How did he get that many touchdowns? That is remarkable. That's our I feel like that's a record, right? I feel like LT maybe had like 25 plus or something. I feel, like, I feel like I heard that somewhere. I don't, not heard that. I feel like I definitely read that or something, but 28, that's insane. Anyway, receivers, Stephon Diggs gets over 1,000 yards. Only five touchdowns, though, but, I mean, he gets over 1,300 yards. Uh, Banks Phillips gets over 1,000 yards with 12 touchdowns. And Jarvis Landry gets over 1,000 yards with eight touchdowns. And our rookie tight end gets 539 yards and five touchdowns. Sacks. Uh, Ronnie Staley still letting up a lot, but other than that, the offensive line's playing very well. But Bobby Wagner, 148 tackles with eight picks. There's some crazy stats going on right now, but anyway, tackles for a loss. Mike Daniels actually played very well, so did Michael Pierce again. Sacks, there's not that many, but we did have a good amount of tackles for a loss, so Mike Daniels definitely came in and did his job, but Tyus Bowser and Chris Wormley are just not getting it done right now, but that's okay. I mean, to be fair, Tyus Bowser having like seven sacks from an outside linebacker isn't awful, so I can't really fault him much for that. But eight interceptions from Bobby Wagner, four from Jimmy Smith, which isn't even bad, three from Tony Jefferson, Tavon Young, and Quan Alexander, two from Marlon Humphrey, and then one from Tyus Bowser, Harvey Poyer, and CJ Mosley. How did he do? Didn't really play all that much. That's okay. Maybe he can, he can still go up to like an 80 or something. That'd be nice. But anyway, uh, let's see. What am I looking for? Touchdowns. We have at least one. And we got one from Quan Alexander. We were second in the NFL um, for offense. What about defense? Maybe like top 15? 31st. Okay, we were second last. Anyway, MVP, Devontae Freeman should have won. I'm just saying. 28 touchdowns. I feel like he, he could have been the winner of that one. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Devontae Freeman comes in second. Uh, nobody else from our team is in that. Defensive Player of the Year does go to Bobby Wagner, though, so that's kind of nice. Anybody else from the Ravens? Nope. Offensive Rookie of the Year does go to our quarterback with our wide receiver in second. And Gregory Taylor in fourth. Uh, I feel like he's either... I think he's a, I think he's a wide receiver. I don't, I don't know. He's either a wide receiver or a running back. And then our, our tight end came in at number six, and nobody else from that. But defensive rookie of the year, nobody from our team in the top five. But Harvey Poyer comes in number six. That's okay. So let's check out the experience. Hopefully the quarterback has a good amount. How are we looking here? 23K, that's it. But that's okay because he already has superstar development. So hopefully he can go up to like a mid-80. That would be nice. But the, I see the wide receivers have a lot of experience. This guy has 46K casually. That's nice. Stephon Diggs is 42K. Uh, he didn't even play, like, extremely well. I mean, he had 1,300 yards, which is nice. He probably made the Pro Bowl or something. Uh, yeah, he made the Pro Bowl. Okay, so this guy probably made the Pro Bowl too then or something. No, he just, yeah, he did make the Pro Bowl. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, check out the defense, though. Anybody here have a lot? Uh, Bobby Wagner is 18K again. This guy is 9K. It's not bad. Tony Jefferson is 15K. Did he make the Pro Bowl? Uh, he did make the Pro Bowl. All right. What about Marlon Humphrey? Randomly? Nope. Okay, he didn't get much. That's okay. So... I'll upgrade the team, and then I'll see you guys, you know, with the with the overalls and stuff. This is the team going into the playoff game. It looks very good right now. A lot of players are confident. Devontae Freeman's up to a 99 with confidence, but this dude went up to a 90 overall. This guy turned into an absolute stud. 86 catching, 95 speed. That's just a that's a that's a deadly duo right there. But anyway, the offensive line looks very good. Uh, this this tight end went up to an 85. That's not bad at all. The defense, this guy needs to just stay here. Just stop. Okay, he's, he's our backup defensive tackle. But the defense looks very good as well. Nobody really went up significantly, but a lot of players went up a little bit. So let's get into the game now. Hopefully we can take down the Chargers, but let me think of a word after we look at the overalls, though. What are the overalls? 89 to an 87. Okay, so we have the overall advantage. I'm going to go with no color rush here. I don't remember what I did, what I did in the Bills rebuild. Whatever. But we're going no color rush. And now to think of a word. Comments. 
Um, let's go with Meatball. Why not, right? Comment Meatball if you're still watching. The only reason why I actually thought of that, though, is because I was getting food earlier with my roommate, Chris. You guys probably all know him. And he took a Snapchat of me, and there was some girl walking behind me, and her head looked like a meatball. Because it was, like, all blurry in the background. It just looked like a giant brown ball of meat. I don't know. But <laughs> it kind of looked like a meatball. But anyway, comment meatball if you're still watching, and hopefully you enjoyed that weird tangent I just went on. 26 to 10, 29 to 10. We haven't scored since the first quarter. 29 to 17, 29 to 24. Somehow we just started scoring in the fourth quarter, though, but I think we lost this game. We did. 36 to 24. I didn't even skip that. It didn't even... That was strange. It didn't give me, like, a cinematic at the end. It just ended. Okay. Anyway, though... 36 to 24, sadly we cannot get anything going really against the Chargers. We were actually leading in the first quarter, but uh, Phillip Rivers looks like he played a bit better than our quarterback. Had a Le'Veon, nope, not Le'Veon Bell. Devontae Freeman is what I meant to say. He actually ran very well. 6.2 yards a carry and a touchdown. Melvin Gordon also got over 100 yards. Keenan Allen had a very good game. So did our tight end though. Good game from him. Denzel Perriman had 14 tackles. Tavon Young had 11 and Bobby Wagner had 10. One tackle for loss from Mike Daniels and then there was a couple sacks but two from Melvin Ingram and then one interception from Trey Boston. We are in free agency and I forgot about Stephon Diggs entirely. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. So let's try to bring him back. So I think this is what he wanted before. So I'm going to go like that. Go like that a little bit. Please come back to the team for this. That's a good offer. I'm glad we got the deal done. Me too, my man, because I really did not want to lose you in free agency. But here we are, pretty much in free agency. If I had to say a position I really need, I think I really need a defensive end. It doesn't really matter which one. Or maybe even an outside linebacker, like a pass rushing outside linebacker that I could convert down to an end or something. Vic Beasley might be here. I don't know. I feel like I've seen Vic Beasley here a couple times, and if he is, I'll definitely pursue him. But we have 28.43 mil in cap room. We can definitely bring somebody back. Oh... Vic Beasley is here, I was right, but, <laughs> I mean, uh, what do I do? Do I, should I, do I just do it? Yeah, yeah. I don't even care what my receivers are. Yeah, I just do it. Absolutely. Let me bring this down, though. Let me not spend that much money. Oh, my goodness. What is this? Like, this wide receiver core is going to be so stupid. Jordan Hicks? Why is Jordan Hicks here? Oh, I would totally go after him, but hold on. He doesn't have a good... Yeah, he's not a pass rusher. He doesn't fit the scheme. Man, Jordan Hicks is one of my favorite players. But anyway, Vic Beasley's going to be on the team, I think. Uh, so, I'm not going to have much money left. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. What did he want? How many years? Four? All right. Let me just do that. 92 points. That's enough. Okay, I'll go after him. Uh, Bud Dupree is here. Nah, I think Tyus Bowser is good enough. Um, Matt Bryant, look at that. I can't believe Odell Beckham Jr. is here. That's insane. Like, <laughs> if I get him, what do I do? I'm keeping all my receivers if I get him. I'm just going to have four receivers over a 90. I mean, it, it's Odell. Like, you can't not bring him in, right? Like, I don't need a wide receiver, but you absolutely can't not bring him in. <laughs> if he if he's there, the offers weren't even that expensive. The highest offer was like 74 points. So There's definitely a chance I didn't even get him because somebody could have just outbid me right at the end. But... They both accepted. But no, Vic Beasley rejected my offer? Really? What? Oh, that's so stupid. Hold on. Is anybody else still here that I kind of want? Man, is... No, he's not. Clay Matthews? I'm not bringing in Clay Matthews. All right, I, guess, I guess I'll just have to trade for one, so maybe I will trade one of my wide receivers. I didn't really want to, though. Uh, who did Vic Beasley end up going to? Did I not offer them 93 points? Did I not offer them 93 points? Or did I not offer him 93 points? I'm not even sure. Man, okay, that sucks. Whatever, <laughs> it happens. I am in the draft now, so let's see what goes on here. I only have a couple people scouted that I really want, so I'm just going to skip to my pick. Hopefully my player is here. That would be very nice. Let's see. There is a left end here. Is that the guy I wanted? I think it was. So draft board. Um, I don't really need that guy. This middle linebacker looks freaking amazing, though. Just letting you guys know now, I'm taking him with one of my picks. I don't know when, but one of my picks, that guy's on my team. But let's go with... What's my other pick? 22nd. I'm going to go with this guy. Hopefully you're decent. Uh, 80 overall with normal? Maybe you'll come in and start? Oh, jeez. I'm not even sure, because this guy's actually very talented. But, I mean, I'll probably have him come start, right? Why not? Why not just have a random rookie come start? This next pick is going to go to a defensive tackle, I think. Actually, no, I don't. I don't think so anymore. I think it's going to be going to Joey Unger. This guy looks phenomenal. I think he's a 3-4 pass rusher. Yeah, he is. This guy looks amazing. Please be good. 81 overall with Superstar. 87 speed, 86 block shed. 
Okay, I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to start him over Tyus Bowser, so I apologize, Tyus Bowser fans, but he's actually very good. Trading down my second round draft pick, maybe for a potential like second next year or something, or a first. I don't think I'm going to be getting first, though. There's a second and a third next year from the Bears. That looks very good. That's definitely going to be the pick, I think. Uh, wow, that's all this year's stuff? No, nah, I think I'm just going to go with the... Never mind. Second and third and a seventh next year from the Browns. Looks a lot better. Actually, not really that much better, but it's definitely a better option than the Bears was. And this one, I think I'm going to go with that middle linebacker because I am that confident this guy is going to be probably a first-round talent. That's my guess. 78 with Quick. He is a first-round talent. I was correct, but barely. <laughs> he was ranked 31st. He's very good. He, I don't really think he's going to start, though. There's really nowhere for me to play this guy. Honestly, there's no way. I'm not moving over either of my middle linebackers to an outside linebacker position because I don't think they would be very good pass rushers. I think with this pick, though, I'm going to draft a cornerback. Let's see. Um... Uh, this guy or this guy? Who should I go with? I'm gonna go with the stop guy because this guy's a lot faster. Let's go with him. 70 overall with normal. Okay, I'm gonna take that other corner, I think, so I'll keep this part in the draft here, but I think I'm gonna take that one other corner. The other guy I scouted in, like, the... That's supposed to go undrafted. I don't really care about. But I'm gonna take this one corner here. Oop, hold on. Draft board. This guy. Branch Studard or Studdard, whatever. Are you good? 72 with normal. Again, not very... Not, not really bad stats. Now I'm just gonna sim, the end, sim to the end of the draft. And hopefully the, the computer drafts us some studs. When your fourth string wide receiver is Jarvis Landry, you're probably doing something right. So <laughs> this is the team. I could definitely trade Jarvis Landry to get another player on defense. Actually, let me see if there's a better fullback. There's usually some decent fullbacks here. Right there, 84 overall. Okay, yeah, you're on the team. That's nice. DRC is a free agent. I just saw that. Actually, let me see if there's any other guys. Why not, right? Some, sometimes there's some random rookies who are beasts. Look at this dude, too. All right, so let's see. Nobody that great. Jesse James is a is a free agent. He's actually not even bad. But anyway, this is the team. I'm actually going to going to put all my all my marbles in this defense because I could definitely upgrade this defense a lot considering I have like three players that are like uh, lower than an 82 here. I have this player guy, I have Unger, and I have Cody. But I am just going to stick with these guys because I think they can all play well. This is the rookie we just drafted. This dude is amazing, by the way. Absolutely phenomenal. Also, this guy has ridiculous stats. Look at this. 86 block shed and 89 power move. He must just have really bad awareness and play rec. Yeah, 67 and 66. So if I can get like 10k experience with him and get those both to like a 75-ish, he'll probably go up to like an 85. So I'm not even worried about him. I'm actually just a bit worried about Unger starting or not starting over Tyus Bowser. I hope that doesn't happen. Also, there's this dude who's just randomly here. That is extremely talented players right now. So I hope this, I hope this Unger guy plays... That would be ideal. Jimmy Smith is still going down in overall, but he's also still playing well, so I'm not even that worried about it. I could definitely trade this team, make this team even better, but I like where it is, actually. But yeah, Jarvis Landry is the fourth string receiver. That's insane. Our receiving core is absolutely disgusting, and I'm going to sim. Actually, hold on. I don't think this will make much of a difference, but you're probably a speed. Yeah, okay. Let me make sure his scheme says speed because he's like our new best offensive player. Actually, he's tied with Devontae Freeman, I guess. So make sure he can get to the fullest potential there. I think everything else is right. So, we are going to sim now. I'm just going to sim straight to the end of the season. And I hope we are like... I hope we have a first round bye. I think this team is capable of having a first round bye. That would be nice. But let's see what happens. Actually, one more thing I just noticed. I'm actually going to sign Jesse James. Because I could use a backup tight end. And I don't even know if they make... If, if a backup tight end actually makes that much of a difference. But I'm going to sign him anyway. Because I saw our backup was like a 60-something. Yeah, so this guy, Jesse James. Out of Penn State, of course. My favorite... My favorite college, my favorite football college team, college football team. I said that in the wrong order. Whatever. Anyway, here we go. Let's sim to the playoffs and hopefully we can, you know, destroy everybody and go 16 and 0. No, I think the last time I rebuilt the Raiders though, it back in, not the Raiders, the Ravens, my fault, back in Madden 17, I think it was my most successful rebuild like for one season, if you think about it, because I went 15 and 1 in like the last season, I think. And I think that's the best record I've ever had. So if this can randomly up that and I can go 16-0 here, that would be great. But I don't think that's going to happen. The season's about to be over. Watch me not even make the playoffs. I'll actually be livid if that happened. I hope we have a first-round bye, though. I think this team's good enough to get a first-round bye. But let's see. EA likes to likes to try to be funny sometimes and, and screw me over in these rebuilds. That's normally in the playoffs, though. Actually, my Chiefs rebuild in Madden 17 kind of got screwed over by EA. But we did get a first-round bye. And our quarterback is MVP. That's a good start. 13-2-1. Wow, look at this division. 
13 2 and 1 from the Ravens, 13 and 3 from the Steelers, and 10 and 6. I almost said 13 and 6. And 10 and 6 from the Bengals. Did the Bengals make the playoffs too? Are three teams from the AFC uh, East going to make the playoffs? Is this. Nope. No. No. AFC. Why can't I speak? North? Right? Oh, no. I think it's. Yeah, AFC North. It says it right there. Oh, no. Oh, my football knowledge. Where is it? But the Bengals didn't make the playoffs. Okay, I feel bad for the Texans. That really sucks for them. <laughs> but, wow. I, I would be pissed if I was doing a rebuild and I didn't make the playoffs going 10-6. and six. But I, I can't believe I blanked so hard on that. But AFC North, I know this. Don't worry. I don't, really. Obviously, I'm sketchy with it. But anyway, 4-0 in the preseason. Who knows? Whatever. We started off the season 5-0. and Then we lost by 3 to the Bengals. Oh, no. That could have been awesome. Then we lost by 2 to the Bengals. <laughs> What is this? What are we, we lost by a combined five points to the Bengals. That's so stupid. Uh, what else did we lose? And then we tied to the Jets. Literally, this, this was an undefeated season. This was an undefeated season if I've ever seen one. Did, did Justin Tucker miss a, field, miss a field goal? Please don't tell me Justin Tucker missed a field goal. Look at the what, four. What? Four interceptions but five touchdowns. What a game. Hold on. Hold on. Please don't tell me missed a field goal. That's kick return. Hold on. Please don't tell me missed a field goal. Okay, you're one for one. Fair enough. What about the other one? Let me check this. Uh, 42 to 3 of the Dolphins, though. What about this one? Please don't tell me you missed a field goal. I mean, our undefeated season was gone from that game, but uh, let's see. Kicking. We didn't even attempt any field goals. Hold Wait. Wait. What did that say? Hold on. I'm getting too into this, I think. I should just go to check out the stats, but hold on a second. What did that say? Oh, extra points made. Okay, I was, thought that was going to say, like, attempted or something. I don't know why I thought it was over there. Whatever, I don't really care about the tie because the, the season was over at that, or the undefeated season was over at that point. But we did get MVP. That's nice. I had the quarterback do 5,300 yards, 41 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He threw four of them in that one game. And I think he had, okay, hold on. This is, I'm just looking at this because this was a, this was a ridiculous rest of the season for him then because I think just against the Bengals, he threw, like, six picks. Hold on a second. So this one, I'm pretty sure he threw four, right? Yeah, he threw four interceptions in this game. In the other Bengals game, I'm pretty sure he had two. He did have two. This dude threw 60% of his interceptions this season to one team. What is that? <laughs> so that means in, in 14 games, he had a four interceptions. That's ridiculous. Wow. Okay, well, that was definitely deserved. Uh, anyway, Devontae Freeman, 15 touchdowns. Our backup had 17 with 1,500 yards for Devontae Freeman, though. Oh, my goodness. Odell Beckham Jr., 111 catches, 1,776 yards with 14 touchdowns. That's best receiver easily. Stephon Diggs gets over 1,000 yards with 9 touchdowns. And then Banks Phillips kind of nearly gets 1,000 yards with 7 touchdowns. Did Jarvis Landry do anything? <laughs> he got 13 catches for 226 yards. Devontae Freeman had three, 3 passing touchdowns, too. Uh, receiving touchdowns, my fault. I didn't, I didn't check how many he had last season, but I'm sure he had over 30 combined touchdowns, which is insane. Our tight end did decently as well. Sacks, Ronnie Stanley doing any better? Yeah, actually, that's that's significantly better from last season. But Bobby Wagner, 133 tackles, not that bad. Tackles for loss, though. Mike Daniels, I think, yeah, he had 12, 11 from Michael Pierce. Sacks, we haven't had many sacks all season, or this whole rebuild, but that's okay. Uh, we had 10 sacks, though, from Mike Daniels. I think I already said that. In interceptions, my bad. I got a bit distracted. My phone went off and I checked it quick. But anyway, Bobby Wagner, five interceptions. Uh, Tony Jefferson, three. Jimmy Smith, three. Jimmy Smith is still trucking along in this. I think he's only like 31, though. Can I check? Yeah, he's 31. That's not even that bad, though. Two interceptions from Quan Alexander, one from Marlon Humphrey, Tavon Young, and CJ Mosley. Do we have any touchdowns? We have at least one. And that's what we're going to get from Quan Alexander. I think he had one last year, too. But we were first on offense. How about defense? Has to be top 10. Come on. Come on. Okay, doesn't show it. What were we actually, though? Uh, how do I do this? Okay, defense. 5,000-something? Wow. We were the best defense, too. Is that what that means? Yeah, because this is going up. We were the best defense and the best offense. That's pretty great. Okay, so this is a very good team. This was totally an undefeated season. I'm just saying EA robbed us of this undefeated season. Anyway, Josh Kelly does get MVP. I'm surprised uh, um, Devontae Freeman. I keep wanting to say Le'Veon Bell. I'm surprised Devontae Freeman wasn't in there, but there he is. He's number five on that. But our player, he also gets Offensive Player of the Year, which is nice. Honestly, I feel like Odell could have even been in this. But anyway, Defensive Player of the Year does go to Bobby Wagner. All right, so we're just going to roll through these rewards. Hopefully, we got them all. That'd be nice. Mike Daniels? I mean, he had like 12 tackles for loss and 10 sacks, but I don't think that's good enough for that. Whatever. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Eric Anthony. All right, do we have any offensive rookies? I don't think so. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Oh, Joey Younger actually comes in second. I didn't even see how he played, but Malcolm Cody comes in sixth. 
Uh, best quarterback does go to our quarterback here, so that's very nice. Best running back does not go to Devontae Freeman. It goes to Le'Veon Bell. That's fair. Uh, best wide receiver has to go to Odell. It does. Any uh, is is wow, completely blank them blanking on this guy's name. Stephon Diggs. Jeez, is Stephon Diggs in here? He's nuts. Uh, best O line. Wait, hold on a second. The Chargers had two guys: Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. No, oh, they did play pretty well. But best O line, Marshall Yanda gets in there at number three. Brandon Scherf and Joel Batonio are six and seven, and that's it from that. But best D lineman, Mike Daniels comes in number comes in at number five. Best linebacker doesn't go to Bobby Wagner somehow, but he comes in number three. Nobody else from our team in that. But best defensive back goes to Jason Verrett with Casey Hayward right behind him. They probably had a pretty good season then. I didn't take note. Uh, I didn't take notice of how they did. Actually, I didn't check the kicker. Hold on, this is important. I need another kicker. Actually, coach of the year was it us? It wasn't. How did the How did the Chargers do? They went 11 and five. Okay, um, so let's check the kicker. It is Justin Tucker. Let's go. What a What a beast. Anyway, though, let's check out the experience. We should have a lot from the quarterback. I'm saying 50k, at least. My guess is at least 50k. 88k. Wow. Wow. You got a lot of stuff. Okay, so the Pro Bowl appearance, MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Quarterback of the Year, and NFL passing rating, passer rating leader. Gets you all that. That got him 61K, and I guess he just accrued like 20K throughout the season or something. But the wide receivers all have a lot of experience. What about Jarvis Landry? I'm, I feel really bad for him. He's a fourth string receiver on this team. <laughs> uh, but, well, holy crap, the center had 41K. Why did that happen? I don't know. He's going to be the best center in the NFL, though. That's probably not true. But the defense, anybody have a lot? Not really that much going around on the defense. Oh, never mind. I lied. I didn't see this guy. 48K. How did you do that? You didn't even win. Wait. Okay. Okay. The game has done this to me before. It says he won Defensive Rookie of the Year. Does it not, right? It says it right there. But he did not win Defensive Rookie of the Year, if I am not mistaken. Pretty sure it didn't. Actually, it didn't say it was him. I guess he actually won it. One of these is messed up. I don't know exactly what. But I'm pretty sure he didn't win it. Unless, did I really just not notice? Yeah, okay. Rashad Stuttered won it. He came in second. This is the dude we have. He very clearly came in second. I don't know. I'll take the experience, though. You know, can't really be that mad about it. But, uh, yeah, pretty decent season. So, I'm going to uh, spend the coach experience and this team experience. And I'll see you guys, you know, with whoever we have to play. Here is the upgraded team. It looks very good. This guy went up to a 93 so he's a bit of a beast now. Uh, this guy is Phillips, dude. I don't think he really went up. I think he's just really confident, uh, which is nice. Our wide receiver core is insane. Three A pluses. Look at this offense. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six A pluses on this entire, seven A pluses on this offense. I didn't see Marshall Yanda. That's ridiculous. Okay. Defense, though, is definitely worse than the offense, but this guy went up to a 91, which looks very good. This guy's an 84. This rookie over here is an 82. Not the greatest, but still very good. We have to take on the Chargers. They won a lot of awards. They seem like they have a decent team. Let's check out the overalls, though. Hopefully, we can beat them. I just realized we lost to them last year, but we are a 95, and they are a 90. This is one of the better teams we've had so far. I think it's just because of the offense, though. Let's go with the color rush uniforms for this one because we lost last season and we did not have them on. So let's go with them this time. Maybe we can win. I don't know. But yeah, hopefully we can get the win. That really sucks. 38 to 24, 38 to 30, 41 to 30. We're going to lose. 48 to 37. We lose again. The Chargers. Man, I can't. I can't beat the Chargers. But that is going to conclude this rebuild, sadly. Look at this. Phillip Rivers was perfect today. 375 passing yards, 82% completion with three touchdowns. Our quarterback played very well too, but this dude, this dude, what, I mean, what do I mean? Phillip Rivers just played out of his mind in this game. Melvin Gordon ran the ball very well, but Devontae Freeman definitely ran better. Definitely ran better. I know he had one less touchdown, but 8.3 yards a carry, that's ridiculous. How do you lose a game when you have 8.3 yards a carry? Stephon Diggs did de decently, but Tyra Williams had two touchdowns. Uh, defense, CJ Mosley and Denzel Perriman each had 12 tackles, one tackle for loss for Mike Daniels, and then a whole lot of sacks there, a couple half sacks, and no interceptions, but how do we lose this game? The Chargers, man, they're like my Steelers of last year. I remember my Jaguars rebuild last year. I think I lost to the Steelers three years in a row in the playoffs, or like two years in a row or something, just like this. So yes, this Ravens rebuild is coming to a close now. I'm sorry, I really wasn't able to rebuild them, apparently, even though this team is phenomenal. There's the individual stats, 99 offense, 95 defense. It could even be better. That's the scary thing, too. I could totally trade Jarvis Landry and make my defense a 99. But, but, I'm going to end it here. I'm not going to do another season. I just like sticking these to three seasons. It's nice. But here's the offense. It looks amazing. 
Definitely the best offense. I know I say this all the time, but I think this is for sure the best offense I have ever had in a rebuild. Probably even extending back to last year, too. This is definitely the best offense I have ever constructed. And this defense is very average. I mean, I could definitely still upgrade it, like I've been saying, because I can get a different left end. I can get a different right outside linebacker. I can even get a different strong safety and cornerback if I needed to. All that good stuff. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.